When people think of Miami Beach, they primarily think of South Beach. But Miami Beach is way more than that. It's actually made up of a number of different neighborhoods that each have their own different character that sets them apart. And in this two-part series, we are going to travel from the northernmost tip of Miami Beach, Fall Harbor, all the way to the southernmost point. Along with Fall Harbor, today we'll also visit Surfside and North Beach. And if you're new here, I'm Mark. I'm currently considering a plan to travel the world, but in the meantime, I'm exploring wherever I can, whether that's locally here in Florida or elsewhere. So where am I right now? Right now I'm at the Hallover Beach and Inlet Park. Right behind that body of water behind me, is the northernmost point of Miami Beach, which is called Ball Harbor. And Ball Harbor is known for its luxury hotels, its luxury shopping. Now, without sounding overly conspiratorial, I did find it odd that when I looked up walking directions from here across the bridge to Ball Harbor, Google Maps kept telling me it could not compute or it was redirecting me through mainland Miami, a 16 mile detour. And I couldn't help but wonder whether that had anything to do with trying to maintain Bal Harbor as an exclusive place. While Bar Harbor Beach is technically public, it's not set up to be as accommodating as Fall Over Beach. There are no public restrooms parking is more expensive and more difficult. Now, of course, if you are staying at the Ritz-Carlton or St. Regis, everything you need is going to be right there. And that is what you get for paying around $1,100 per night for a room. The inlet behind me is called the Hallover Inlet, and actually it has very, very rocky waters, and there are whole YouTube channels dedicated to showing boats encountering these enormous waves. We are now at the Ritz-Carlton, at one of the rare access points to Ball Harbor Beach, one of two that I'm aware of. And here we are at Ball Harbor Beach. These lounge chairs look comfy, but they have been a source of controversy at other parts of Miami Beach. One thing that's really nice about Ball Harbor Beach is this well-designed trail that runs next to the shore. Yeah, I've just been walking along this path. It's a very nice, well-maintained path along all these different resorts. And as I was mentioning before, there really isn't any public facilities. So yeah, but if you are kind of uh, free spirit and you don't mind just coming to the beach and walking a little while putting a little bit extra effort Yeah, this is a nice beach to come to it, The one thing to say about the path behind these little resorts is that it really goes on for a while and It's not always obvious where you can get back to the main street, which is Collins Avenue So I've just been meandering here. It's very pleasant Okay, wait a second. I think we're finding a spot that we can go through. This is exciting. My guess is it's near Ball Harbor Shops. Now, I'm not really their target customer, but I thought I'd check it out anyway. Now the nice thing about Bal Harbor is right down the street there are some shops and so you can always pick up any incidentals that you might have forgotten at home, whether it's a new handbag or uh, a wristwatch. Everything you could, could need is right here. Hi fashion, you be the judge. Surfside is a little bit different from Bal Harbor in that it has a more community vibe and it's a little bit more organic and you start to see a little bit of mixing between the luxury high rises of Bal Harbor and also the more traditional architecture of Miami Beach. My guess is that cute little piece of history is going to be destroyed soon. Probably for one of these luxury high rises. We'll see. This was my favorite high rise. It screams, I love nature but also my creature comforts. Now, Surfside Beach being more of a community beach used to have beaches that were wide open. People in the area could just 
come with whatever they wanted to and plop down on the beach. But then a, a controversial law went into effect last year that lets the condos and the hotels on the beach put out chairs, whether or not anybody is using them. Eliana Salzhauer worries soon her unspoiled paradise will look more like this, something we're used to seeing on Miami Beach. I mean, this is like going to a movie and saving a whole row for your friends that aren't even there yet. Now, as you can see, Surfside has its fair share of fancy buildings, just like Val Harbor. But you can see that this area does still have some of the, the older architecture that Miami Beach is known for. Now this building looks a little bit rough around the edges, but there are some that have been kept up. Now this building I noticed when I was walking past has a lot of support beams underneath of it. And I'm kind of wondering if it, this is in response to what happened uh, locally here. If you aren't aware, Surfside was actually in the news not so long ago for a tragic building collapse that killed um, 98 people. An investigation into its causes is still ongoing and the community is working to heal. So I've now made it to North Beach. In North Beach, there is a huge park called Oceanside Park right next to the beach that really goes on for blocks and blocks. It's pretty pleasant and I just got here and so just taking a breather and it is nice to be in the shade for a little while. As you can imagine, a lot of people do choose to live in North Beach, mostly because it is calmer than South Beach and mid beach for that matter. You are both close to the action, close to the beach, but you can still kind of walk out your door and feel peaceful. So one weird thing to think about is that Miami Beach used to be just kind of a swampy sandbar, kind of similar to the Everglades in a way, I guess. And there used to be just one structure on the island and that was to help people who were shipwrecked kind of pick themselves up again. And then a little bit later on in the 1800s, a family decided to see if they could use this space for agriculture. And so they started a coconut plantation. Eventually Miami Beach became known for its avocados, interestingly enough, but it didn't stop there. Soon that family and other investors saw the potential of this island as a resort town. And that is when they began dredging Biscayne Bay and almost doubled the size of this island. It wasn't long before Miami Beach began attracting snowbirds and vacationers from up north, as it does today, as well as a lot of people from around the world. Now, when a lot of people think of Miami Beach, they think of its famous Art Deco architecture from the 1920s and 1930s. But Miami Beach is also home to what is in common parlance referred to as MIMO, which is Miami modern architecture from the post-war era. And while you find the Art Deco more toward South Beach in the North, you start to see more of this MIMO style architecture. Now it is not consistent across the board down the coast as newer buildings are being built all the time, but it is interesting to see kind of these different eras depicted in the Miami Beach landscape. It is tough to think about this balance between wanting to preserve history and also innovate for the future. There are a lot of people moving to Miami Beach and they need places to live. And with that, it was time to get back to my car before the parking meter ran out. We still have a couple miles to go before we hit South Beach, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss the second part of this series. And if you love beautiful beaches, you're gonna love this next video on La Paz, Mexico. I'll also add the second part to this series here when it's up. See you soon.